much can tell you that I'm going to shift to little people. But doing it in 1981 as opposed to doing it in 1938, there was a big skew. I mean, there weren't that many little people around, or at least not in one place. Uh, <clears throat> so, yeah, um, putting us all together in Los Angeles in a hotel for a month, two months, it creates its own juices and stuff. And, and from that, a lot of us were discovered. A lot of us were discovered and we moved on to do blockbusters and stuff. Spielberg came on, getting T. Lucas came on, got all the Ewoks. So it really did bust out a lot of little people into and myself included. So it's, it's a, a, a great opportunity. Now, how did they how did they discover you at the moment? You just there was an open casting. All it was was just they needed 150 people. Um, they had some that, that um, got all the speaking roles, uh, but most of them were just we needed background people, and uh, I was casted as one of the background people. And uh, actually, I had to play a, a, a drunk little person all the time. Every time he saw me on camera, I'd have a beer in my hand. Stumbling around, and uh, <clears throat> the director kind of fell in love with me. A uh, gentleman by the name of Steve Rash, I don't know if you know it, but uh, he was pretty much infatuated with me. And uh, I was a big bragger along with my brother. My brother was also working on seven years older than him. Uh, and um, <clears throat> we played football and stuff, and uh, it was a huge set of stairs in in the lobby that was in a, on stage, but it was a huge curved staircase. And uh, I know for some reason I opened my big fat mouth and said, you know, man, I could roll down that, that flight of stairs pretty cool, <laughs> easily, no problem. And they had some little people that were just hired from, you know, uh, part of the stunt association. Uh, but this director said, do you really think you can do that? And I said, yeah, let's go. So we put up two cameras and said, I want to give you a chance. Sit at the top of the stairs. Billy Barty's going to run by, kind of nudge you a little bit, and you're going to roll down that. you got to go all the way down and then try and walk back up. And you can't mess up now because we have beer bottles lining the edge of the staircase. So you knock one of those, you hit one of those, you have to stay in the middle. You hit one of those, all those bottles. So, one take, that's all it was. One take, down the middle, rolled down the neck. That was it. I call it my, my fall to fame because I got mixed reviews on a lot of people. After I did that, it was like, oh man, this guy's really talented. Talented to the fact that not so much acting, but just putting himself on the line like that. I wasn't part of the stuff, the stuff in the association. I did after that. I had people come and say, let's, let's do more, let's do more. And that's how we got to the big market. They wanted agile people. So from that, it's like, hey, well, this guy can go down front of the We got to have him on this side. So it kind of, I just took advantage of the, the opportunity. And it, it worked out pretty well for me. And I couldn't do it now if you asked me to. But back then, it was does anybody have any questions? Just please raise your hand. Go ahead in the back, yes. Um, Mr. Bonacaro, yeah. you've worked with Charles Band quite a lot. Oh. How did that get started? Well, I'll tell you. Um, I think it was, I, I did a, um, I think it was called Rage War or Dungeon Master. Yeah. And we went from, that was my brother also. We went from doing another rainbow to, uh, uh, I think it was, John Beebler or and Charlie uh, that caught wind of us and caught wind of the whole that many little people being in in LA, 150 of us. Uh, so uh, he said, "Yeah, I need these two little cliff dwellers. So would you mind doing it?" I said, "Oh." And, and well, another thing, I had to throw rocks, and we had to be a little more agile. So me and my brother did it, and. From then on, I think it was John and John just said, you know, Phil, you're, you're great to work with. I'm going to try and put you in 
as many of the films I'm working on as possible. And I couldn't even name them all right now, but from that point, from uh, Dungeon Master, all the way through Empire and Full Moon and all, over 20, 30 films. And all the things got big, because before it was just, you know, physical. Then I started becoming like, I wanted to like be an actor and I'm an act. I don't wanna, I don't want to be a stunt person, I want to be an actor, so parts just started coming and I kind of grew with it. They give me more lines, they give me more lines, but I did a, I did a film with them called The Creeps. Oh my God, the dialogue in it was, was very extensive. And, um, That's where you played Dracula? Yes. Yes. And we had other little people who had to be, you know, Wolfman and, mm -hmm. and, and the mummy and, and they did not say anything. All they did was just kind of grow. But me, Dracula, had to do all the dialogue for everybody. And it was quite lengthy. Uh, so I actually looked at that as being like a stepping stone for saying, well, I, I can handle this dialogue. I, I, I know how to do that. I can do that. And look menacing. You know, a lot of people talk to me about that. Some people have seen it, some people haven't. Um, I look at that piece as being a. Uh, a stepping stone for me because I mean, it may not have been like a big blockbuster film, but it really tested my ability to be able to handle dialogue and, and be an actor, not a not a an alien or same for troll. When I did troll, I didn't want to get in that costume. I did not want to be the troll. I didn't. But uh, John and Charlie said, "Look, if you want to Malcolm, which is what I really wanted that part." Uh, Oh, you're gonna have to. You're gonna have to be the troll too. So uh, that was another thing that kind of pushed me to hey, look after them both. And I did. And I, I took that as a being uh, another stepping stone where not only the acting but I could still I could still head to the physicality of full body costume like the Ewoks and Fuzz Bucket and and garbage pail kids and everything where you don't see. Uh, I wanted to break out of that. Yeah, I wanted to ask about that. Yeah, I wanted to, I wanted to, I mean, I did my fair share with a lot of the videos. I mean, and, and actually, uh, George Lucas and Ron Howard helped us do that with Willow for the sheer fact that all the Ewoks that were little people were used in in Willow, but no costumes, you know, that are, you could actually, you know, see the people that are saying the dialogue and, which is a whole new, it's a whole different way of expressing yourself. You know, you're covered from head to toe, you've got stellar lenses in your eyes, and people don't even know that could be anybody. And there are a lot of little people that have um, come and gone that their career was like that, starting off in full body makeup and then slowly but surely peeling all the pieces and, and becoming uh, a regular actor with no prosthetics. So uh, uh, working with Full Moon and working with Empire and working with Charles Band uh, and John Lear and those people uh, really did uh, really didn't make me what I am today. They really did give me the opportunity to uh, to really act. So uh, I I wouldn't have I wouldn't have stayed at all if I was to work with the people again. They were, they were great people to work with. You, you briefly touched on it, and I think that it deserves a ton of credit. The ability to work in a full body costume and learn to express yourself. If no one's done it before, it's so hard. Like, I can't even express to you how hard it is. And you've been able to really capture that time and time and time again. I was just wondering what process that you went through on how you discovered the more you know, because you have to exaggerate everything in order to see a little bit of movement, honestly. And I was just wondering, you know, were you, was that something that you learned from someone else that was doing that? Or was that something you kind of, you know, learned on your own? I think I actually did it on my own for the sheer fact that, uh, like for instance, Troll. If, if, if they were to do a remake of Troll now and have all the same animatronics, they probably wouldn't even have a little person in a, a costume, they'd probably have some kind of new technology that would 
make the same thing, but it would be, you wouldn't have to sacrifice the guy <laughs> inside the cockpit. And I think it would be the same kind of in Star Wars too. If they had to do the Ewoks all over the water. They, it was really weird. They were going through their, their, their testing of what was gonna work. George wanted the eyes to, to, to blink and they just weren't at that stage yet to where they could do that. So we had to look out of, we were almost like if you put on a pair of sw swimming goggles. And that's what we had to look through. But what he didn't realize, he learned while we were shooting, that you know, you're covered from head to toe, first of all. You have gloves, you have tubes, then you have this fur coat you wear in the head, and the gloves and feet, everything. So when you start running through the forest, and we're supposed to be the sure-footed animals, or running through the forest, those lenses from the heat of the body goes into the thing. So now you're looking through fog and running into each other, running into trees, or stumbling, fog, blah, blah, blah. So they had to draw, drill little <coughs> holes in each one of the Ewok heads and eyes so that it could breathe a little bit or even out much. Not only that, they had no, I think it was after uh, Jedi that uh, when people wore full body outfits, they had like a cooling system that they can wear that would keep them cool because that was the real thing. You work in that costume for about 20 minutes, half hour, running, working this, you know, hot. It gets so hot that you just, so they have to stop, open our backs up, and it took them a while to figure out, well, they're, they're just another spree. Then they figured out, well, let's get some blow dryers, take the heating element out, shove that in their backs and that's their cooling time. And that cut the time down to where we, you know, you take your head off, you have to take your thing down, pull your thing. It would take a lot of time to do that. Now with technology, they make costumes and stuff like that that work really, really fast. And it's, uh, it's more efficient. It doesn't waste time and it doesn't wear on the actor that's inside. I kind of just grew with that. The troll, my God, nothing against all the special effects of those guys, but back then it was, you know, they had to make sure everything was, especially on the close up make, and they would just do anything they could possibly get to super glue just to make it stay. Uh, when I get fuzz bucket, they couldn't waste the time taking square lenses out of your eyes. They just leave them in there for a really long time so you have, the guy would have to suffer the next day. But you go, well, look, I'm not gonna go. I had a bad incident with the bus bucket outfit to ship out the, the, the lenses were cutting my eyes. So I couldn't put it back in. Dr. Will let me put it back in. So everyone goes, oh, now you're gonna throw the, the whole shoot back. And so nowadays, I think now with technology, <clears throat> they have things that were they won't let you do that, or they won't do this. So they'll put a kind of lens in there to get the same effect in a different way. So I kind of grew up with that, having like learn that. Like you try and get me into a full body costume now, I'm sure um, things would be a whole hell of a lot different. I try to stay away from them, but um, uh, if I were to, and I, you know, a lot, a lot, a lot of little people out there now got their start being full body costumes. And I think that's just to show that we can physically handle it. But I think now as we get older and cinema is a lot different, they take care of that to where it's easier on them so it doesn't take so much out of the, the actor. So you get a better, you get everyone gets a payoff on it. The actor can be a little more expressive without pain or everything goes on schedule. It's that kind of thing. I kind of grew up with that. And it was all because of the the, the people I met with Full Moon and Charles Band and, and that's why I wanted my, my, my message with them. So I kind of grew up. Anybody else have any questions? Yeah, Jeff. Um, I know you guys have been working on this for a while. Can you grew up with you with Willow and everything. I mean, we, we, we got a little tank last night. We watched The Creeps. Just amazing stuff, Phil. Uh, uh, I love 
just garbage cinema, Phil. I love Howard the Duck. Yeah. Uh, garbage Pill Kids is yeah. like amazing. Uh, did you guys know though that the movie was going like, I don't know, what was the vibe on set? Because uh, I know Garbage Pill, I'm sorry, Phil. Because it was, I think, originally uh, like a horror movie. It was supposed to be, and then they kind of like, let's do a PG, let's completely change the vibe. If you, any thoughts, Esther? Uh, there was a, another Beagler thing, Beagler. Did all the, the heads and and I I myself I mean I had children and, and I couldn't believe those cards were so popular I, I really didn't I I got them for my children but I didn't think well, we're gonna now we're gonna make a we're gonna make a whole feature length film on it and it was um, actually Rod Avatel who directed it came to me and. He knew that I knew a lot of little people, and he said, look, I don't want to go through the, the, uh, I'm going to call you all in, and I'll just pick the ones. He said, Phil, you got to tell me what guys can do and what guys can't. And these are guys that I brought in that did Star Wars, did, you know, that all, did all the full body makeup. So that's what I did. I just, and here you go. Now, each one of you guys are going to get fitted for these <coughs> a little bit different. They were a little easier to go because the heads were so big, so you had a little space in there. It wasn't like to the face. So that was the easy part about it. And on the set, it was like we all knew each other very well. And we all said, it's just like, what, you know, is this movie you're doing? And it's like, well, I didn't know anything about the garbage thing except for what I got for the kids. And it was, I don't know if this is going to. I think we should just, you, you know what, guys, we should wing it. You know, even when we were doing Jedi, we didn't think Jedi was going to be like, God, we are working really hard on this, you know, running around in these furry costumes. You think it's going to do anything? But we knew about, you know, Star Wars <coughs> 1 and 2 and, and the hush hush of doing 3, but using little people was like, look, I don't know, I, I, I don't know. Let's just, hey, let's just do our jobs, guys. So we were kind of stuck. Once we got there, we were thinking to ourselves, uh, look, it, it's another job. You got to deal with it. Sure, we had problems because we had, if you've seen the movie, we had to be followed by two guys who had cables sticking out of our back. And they would maneuver the eyes and the, make the fit. So we had not control this product, and we're like, wow, you know, that this is kind of cool. It was kind of, you know, kind of crazy, funny, and we had a lot of fun with it. We, we really did. We didn't expect it to tank as bad as it We really thought it would be a little more. But it is a part of, you know, like you said, um, what did you say? I mean, it's a cult classic. I mean, yeah, this is a major following now. Garbage movie. cinema, or what do you said? <laughs> whatever. You I, well, I, yeah. I yeah. mean, it in the most respectful way. No, 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 no. I'm off. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Garbage Pail Kids, the movie, is not like one of my headlines. I mean, like, <laughs> <laughs> so it's, you know, I know it wasn't like the greatest movie ever made. But it was just part of an experience that, that, that helped me take that next step up the, so everything I've done has really given me that extra step. So uh, I don't, you know, you say, oh, I've been in Return of Jedi, I've been in Willow, I've been in all the, you know, big name movies. It doesn't take anything away from Garbage Bell Kids and Creeks and all those full moon pictures. I did, I think I did, I, I looked at it the same way. <laughs> walk in saying, oh, well, this is going to be a big blockbuster film, so I'm going to do something different now. The job's a job. You give, me, you give me the script, you tell me what I have to do, and you do it. It's up to the rest of the company to figure out how it, how it does. I'm glad to George Lucas to the Spielberg. You put a name like that in there, it makes it different. But I think, I think people like Charles Mann, uh, I mean, you like John Beagler, they, they are, uh, they were the, they started way back. And they started it with a very, very low budget, not the money that Steven Spielberg and, and George Lucas had. And I think did quite well. So that's all part of 
the genre that you guys are so great at and absorbing, you know, I uh, uh, I enjoy coming to these horror genre cons because uh, a bulk of my work is a, a lot of horror, but low budget horror and high budget horror. Same with drama, high budget drama, low budget drama, and I just like I think it's I don't look at it as high and low. I just look at it as a job. It's what I do. It's what I do well. So just do it. I don't worry about whether you guys just kind of make it like I mean I could walk down the street and oh well so it's you guys that bring up stuff like garlic bell kids and creeps <laughs> and. And sideshow and all the fun great that it makes it worthwhile. Thank you very much. Okay, anybody else have any other questions? Yes, uh, yeah, in, in, the, uh, in the back, and then I'll come back to you and yell at you. All right. Sorry if I jumped over him. No, that's fine. <laughs> uh, something you brought up is. What, what would you say are some of the fundamental differences between working in like uh, low budget and working in something like a George Lucas film? Like, uh, would you say, is that even anything you would take notice of? Uh, like Con considerable di difference in the paycheck. Oh, right. <laughs> okay. That's, it. All right. That's about it. You know, it's I, I look at it like um, uh, actually, there's a lot of work I did. In uh, independent and uh, independent work and, and college work, AFI, I work with AFI a lot, but, and those are where you don't get paid at all. You just do what you, you you kind of volunteer your your expertise, whatever it may be, uh, and that's the way I looked at it with. Um, when I started doing the full moon pictures, the, the low budget pictures, they were just low budget. I'd get something, but just not as much as I would if I was to do it. And it's still like that way today. Um, sure, you're going to do another Ron Howard, George Lucas, Steven Spielberg picture. You, you, you're going to want to get paid for that. I knew. I knew what I was walking into, so if you were asking me then for the difference, I, yeah, there's a difference, and money does have a, an effect, and it's a triple down effect. It's like if you got a budget for a movie, you got to say you got a million dollars. It's really got a low budget, but I don't look at it any differently than when you're working on a fifty million dollar budget or a hundred million dollar budget. And now look at us, where we're you know we're two hundred and fifty three thousand three hundred million dollar budgets. And these people are getting astronomical. You know, like I kind of look at it like, 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 like football or sports. You know, you got guys who do what they're supposed to do, and some get. See, that's what we try and do. Is I don't, but I think the majority of people coming into Hollywood, especially young people, look, you're gonna make me work. I'm gonna pay, and that. At the very beginning, you walk in, you go look, and that's the way I looked at it. That's why I did independent before I even started getting into professional acting. Well, if you don't have to pay me, just give me the opportunity to step in front of the camera and, and show you what I can do, and I will. You don't have to pay me at all, and you'd be surprised how many people I've worked with, big big people that just volunteer their time, even even pay to, to the to the budget of, of finishing the film uh, to help it get done. Uh, so back to your original question, you said, do I see the difference? Yes, there's a difference. I think it's up to the, the, the actor walking into it, saying, well, are you doing this for the craft? Are you doing it for the money? And if you're doing it for the money, you better be prepared to be Turn down because they're going to find somebody else that'll do it for cheaper. Or it's all about me. I like to consider myself the person I just want to just give me an opportunity to get in front of the camera, and I take advantage of it when I can. Even now. 
Alex. Have you ever been offered a role that at the time you just didn't take or couldn't take, and now looking back on it, you kind of wish you did? No, I think. Uh, uh, I'm trying to think. I think there there have been roles that I've read and didn't get it. Another little person got it, but I don't think I've gotten. I don't think I've had something to where. Yeah, you have the part and just say, uh, I, I just refuse to do it because I don't like the dialogue, or I don't like the storyline, or I don't like it. No, I, I, I usually, I've usually had it where I walk in, and I got seven other little people that I know very, very well. I mean, that we work together all the time, and we just, I've got to do a better job than that guy, I've got to do a better job than that So it's usually, um, Good example, Ward Davis. Worked with him when he was 12 years old. It was wicked. And Kenny Baker and all the big names moving. And I was just another Ewok. But after that, and then Ward started acting, he went for Leprechaun. I went for Leprechaun. I remember walking right in there and seeing him, hey, you doing that? And I can remember thinking, God, thinking I was fucking work, gorgeous work. I, I should be able to do that. I think the only negative part is this, when they call you and say, yeah, sorry, Phil. You did a good job, but we, we're going to go with work. And then I see his product, and I see where it goes. He went, well, if I want you to be you, you, you go like, man. Then I go, I can either sit and dwell on the fact that I didn't, if I did that, then there, are, there were so many things that I didn't get. And if I dwell on it, then I just won't go out and read anymore. So it's like, you just gotta take it, take it for what it is, you know? If, if any of you actors out there, I'm sure you already know, you've gotta be able to handle the, the no's. You know, it's not always yes. It's, it, there's a lot of rejection, a lot of, and you, you take it kind of personally because you're going, well, why did you get, what is it about this guy, or well, both little people, what is it about this guy that must have done something? So I gotta figure that out. I gotta figure out that little thing that, and I, I haven't had something where I've had someone say, Phil, you got the part, we're all ready to go, ready to shoot. And I said, well, I just can't do it because I don't want you or I don't like the subject matter. So I haven't had that, that, that happen to me yet. All right, one last question. Yes. Um, in 1996, um, I was young. He trained with you on Tusk from the Trench. That was a blood. Yeah. Well, before I did that, I did a, uh, a Tales from the Crypt, uh, Food for Thought, which was uh, Tales from the Crypt, before Bordello came out. And uh, <clears throat> I, that's where I kind of got hooked on the, the real little horror genre thing. I played the part of Emmett, and we were part of the circus, and um, Ernie Hudson was uh, the lead in that with the clown. It was a very good piece. And so when they came back to me and said, look, we're going to do this Bordello and Blood, and uh, Chris Randall, and and Jay Hart and Corey Feldman, and I said, oh God, yes please, um, am I going to be like part of a Crypt Keeper thing, or am I going to cover? Oh no, you're just going to play a, a real bad guy, you know, who works with the vampires. Have I got McGrath, you remember any time, do I get to be a vampire, do I get to be a vampire? I did that in, 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 in also with uh, Land of the Dead too, with George Romero, it's like, do I get to be a zombie? Do I get to be a... I'm oh, sorry, Phil, we're just gonna kill you. And, 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 and so, yes, it was, it, it, I had a great time. I had a great time working with all those people. It was, it was a, a, a fond, fond memory. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Phil Fondacara.